Hello and welcome to another episode of A Fresh Perspective here at Heavenward Thinking. Today we're finishing the last portion of Romans chapter 7. It's a very difficult passage, but we're going to do our best to tackle it and to share some uh, fresh perspectives on things for you. In verse 14 it says, We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual, sold as a slave to sin. I do not understand what I do. For I, what I want to do, I do not do, but what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that is, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do, this is I keep on doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me, raging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within me. What a wretched man I am! Who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, I myself in my mind am a slave to God's law, but in my sinful nature a slave to the law of sin. So as we unpack this uh, for our viewers, how can we unpack this in a way that will make sense to them? <laughs> well, I think, you know, the problem is every time somebody tries to unpack this, they just more complicate it more, right? And so you end up, you know, people going, hey, if you say this, you're wrong. If you say this, you're wrong. Really, what, what Paul's trying to say to people is, listen, the law is a representation of God's holiness. Mm. Okay? So the law, if we did it perfectly, absolutely perfectly, right oh, then we could be in the presence of god because that represents his holiness but the problem is my flesh right represents all that's wrong in the world and so it's pretty simple you're at battle mm. right that which is ugly i think there's a million words you want to use but that which is ugly is in battle with that which is beautiful right God's law is beautiful. It, it represents who he is, right? And so Paul just makes it really clear. Like, listen, naturally, right, I'm always going to be a battle. Mm. I'm always going to be because even if my mind is set on this, then my heart doesn't follow. And if my heart is set on holiness, then my mind doesn't follow. And my eyes don't follow. And my ears don't follow. And my actions don't follow. Like, they just don't always line up. And so what I love, the simplicity of this is, Paul says, Every day it's a battle. Every day a fight, right? I'm never going to get it perfectly done well, right? But I'm going to fight. And what I what I really love about this section is it gives us the freedom to realize that this is a fight and I'm not going to get it right. Mm, absolutely. And I think it's important uh, to give context to Romans chapter 7, this portion. We've already had chapter after chapter in Romans of presenting, you cannot possibly measure up to God's law. There's no way that we can measure up. We can't be holy. Uh, we can never uh, be justified before God without our Savior Jesus Christ, without faith in Jesus Christ. And he presents chapter after chapter of that argument. And then here in Romans chapter 7, we see why that is so important because we cannot possibly uh, win uh, this battle every single time. We can't always be uh, winning and doing everything right. We're always going to have the temptation to sin. We're always going to be tempted to do things that we don't want to do, that we know we shouldn't do, uh, and that we know is against God. Uh, but we're always going to have this struggle. And so it's good that we have uh, the context of this and that we can rely on uh our faith in Jesus as opposed to just relying on our good deeds because there's nothing that we can do where we're ever going to be able to measure up and always be able to win this battle every time. Mm -hmm. we're, we're always going to fall. We're always going to have this battle. So it's important that we have uh, that in our mind as we look at this and then strive to do uh, the best that we can to win this battle and not give in to our sinful nature. And that's really, I think, what Paul's taking at, at this angle here is He's not going to always get it perfect, but he's going to always strive his best to fight this battle, to fight against the sinful nature, and to get his uh, focus heavenward on Jesus and make sure his mind and heart and body are in the right place. Well, I think you just, I mean, you hit it right on the head right there, right? Our focus is on Jesus, right? It, it, the, the whole answer to this battle is Jesus. I'm not going to do what I want to do. I'm just mm. not going to do it. I'm going to say the mean thing. I'm going to do the wrong thing. I'm going to do whatever, whatever it's Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. It's, again, all Paul's really stating here is, again, our need for Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. I can't do it, right? Mm -hmm. So when we build religious systems built on doing it, 
uh, we're, we're actually, you know, uh, undoing what Paul has just said. Right? When we expect perfection, uh, we're going against what the Word of God says, which is mm. there's nobody good. There's not one person good. So, again, what happens when we do that is we drive all this stuff underground. Right? All of a sudden, we have people who actually are trying to pretend like they don't battle like this. Mm. They never have battles. They never lose a fight. They never do any of these things. And Paul's giving us the freedom not to sin, but to participate in the battle, mm. which is you're not always going to win the battle. Right? We focus on the fact that we won the war mm. because Jesus won the war. Amen. Uh, you know, in uh, the book of Philippians, Paul uh, explains uh, that he uh, was doing everything right according to the standards of the law. That if, if anyone thought they had uh, reasons to place confident in the flesh, uh, he has more. And he gives this whole list of things that, uh, that qualify him uh, to say that he can be confident in his flesh. Uh, but what ultimately he comes away with is that uh, he counts none of that as value. What is of value to him is his faith yes. in Christ and relying on what Jesus did for us, not what we can do. And so when we look at if Paul, this amazing apostle, this amazing missionary, uh, this amazing guy who did all these great things, even by the law standards, he did all these great things. If he even says that he is struggling against this, this sin nature and that he is not uh, doing the things that he wants to do and he's still struggling with sin, if even he's doing that, uh, what gives us the audacity to think that we won't struggle? We definitely are going to struggle with sin. No matter how great of a Christian you think you are, no matter how many times you go to church, no matter how many ministries you're involved in, uh, no matter how much of scripture you memorize, you're still going to struggle with sin. Uh, none of us can be perfect on our own. So as you pointed out, it really brings us back to it's about Jesus, what he did for us, not what we can do on our own. Yeah, really, you can read this whole section and, and, and really you get down to the last couple verses where Paul says, what a wretched man I am. Right? Mm -hmm. Who can save me from all of it? Who can deliver me from this body of death? Well, thanks be to Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And I love what he says. I serve God with my mind. I know the right I should do. I, I know the law. I know what I know all these things. But I serve sin with my body, right? Mm -hmm. With my flesh. I just don't do the things that I know that I need to do. And if again, if that's Paul. He's fighting that, you know, super apostle Paul who says, hey, imitate me as I imitate Christ, mm -hmm. right? Then what does that do for you and I? It allows us freedom. Now, again, we might have that freedom, but the real struggle comes when we go corporate with other people not allowing us to have that struggle. Again, mm -hmm. we can sit around and let people sin, but we understand that there's a struggle within all of us right we just keep pointing out what people need to do and when they don't do it then we get upset about it we get frustrated we get rid of them we we you know pitch them to the side out of you know anna green gables but we we do that kind of stuff all the time and the, and the bible says like no the only way you're gonna fall the only one you're gonna fail is if you're trying Mm, absolutely you know we've talked about uh, in the past as we were going through these uh, recent chapters of the it should give us compassion when we know we struggle with things. It should give us compassion to help other people and to not always expect them to be perfect. Yeah. We know that we fail. We see that Paul knew that he failed, and he didn't expect us to all be perfect all the time. We have a Savior for that. And again, he, he makes it very clear in Romans, it's not so that we can just go and sin so that grace may abound. No, we should be striving every day to live more and more of a holy life towards uh, Christ. And, and our heavenward walk and our heavenward thinking should get us closer to Christ. But we're going to still struggle. Uh, so hopefully you've been challenged by this this week. It's a very difficult topic, but hopefully this made it uh, simple, uh, simplistic, and hopefully you're able to understand some things and take something away. If you take nothing else away, make sure that you're remembering that it's only Jesus that we can rely on, not our own good works. Amen. We hope you've been challenged and that you'll join us next time for another episode of A Fresh Perspective here on Heavenward Thinking.